Now, I am a fan of stealth games, especially the Hitman series, which is a huge contradiction from my usual playstyle of most games, where I chase the feeling of power by beating everything with blunt objects and finding ways to break the game and go past certain limits. For this run of Fallout New Vegas, I planned everything out. However, like my usual run of Hitman, nothing went to plan. Can you beat Fallout New Vegas as Agent 47? My original intent with this challenge was to take out every leader of every major faction, kill everyone undetected, and use faction armor to infiltrate and kill most members of each faction. But like I mentioned, everything went wrong, and due to some poor planning, this challenge took way longer than expected, and accidentally forgot about a few factions. Now onto the challenge. I started with the name, which is simple enough to explain. Due to the poor hair selection and a lack of a few customization options, this is the best I can do for Agent 47. With the special perks, I chose a very standard, well-rounded build with a little bit more focus into stealth and luck. This was a bit of an oversight because I kind of forgot about the strength requirement of the anti-material rifle which I'd be using down the road. For the skill tags, I chose guns, sneak, and speech, which are all self-explanatory. For my traits, I chose skilled for the skill points boost and trigger discipline, which would allow me to get more accurate shots to be able to achieve more stealth kills. After leaving the docks, I headed straight for Chet to buy the silenced pistol and enough ammo to start with. I completed the tutorial like normal and went back to the saloon to begin the Ghost Town gunfight quest. I began by following Cobb to the wall he leans against and made his brain matter acquainted with the ground below him. I continued the quest like normal so there is no need for me explaining it. I started the fight but by the time I got into position, there was only one man left. I snapped him from a distance with the silenced 22. Before I left Prim, I made sure to pick up a Powder Ganger's outfit to be used later. On my way to Prim, I stopped by the Powder Ganger's explosive theme park and took out both members, while disguised as a fellow employee. Once in Prim, I took out both the convicts that guarded the Gold Rush by heading around the far side and using the dumpster as cover. Once in the Gold Rush, I spoke to Johnson Nash and began my kind of town. Sneaking into the Bison Steve Hotel was quite easy. After taking out the first convict, two others ran into sight and allowed me to make a stealthy kill. I snuck around using the maintenance store and going through the kitchen where I had a good line of sight on the rest of the convicts, two of which were playing musical chairs, with three chairs. Kinda reminded me of something the Davinci twins would do, but at least they were having fun. With only one convict left, I took my shot and unfortunately missed, and he spotted me. But due to no other convicts being around, this did not fail the challenge. After retreating around a corner, this convict decided to use his magical talent as a sorcerer and disappeared before I can take him out. I genuinely have no clue where he ended up or where he went, I was never able to find him. I freed the deputy only for him to instantly teleport to the gold rush, and after finding the deputy, I continued the quest and went searching for the sheriff. I decided to go for Sheriff Myers at the NCR Correctional Facility. At the facility, I put on my Potter Ganger outfit and killed the greeter to avoid paying him caps to get in. When I was inside, I talked to Myers to convince him to be the sheriff, but my job here wasn't done. I wanted to take out every member of the Potter Gangers in this facility, so I did just that. Going from tower to tower and building to building, I took out everyone one by one. I did this all without being detected. When it came down to the final three people, Eddie, Scrambler, and a single guard, I struggled. After many failed attempts, I found a plan that worked. By reverse pickpocketing a mine into the guard's pocket, I can then use the grenade launcher to blow up Eddie and Scrambler. Miraculously, the guard survived with the live mine placed in his pocket, and I had to take him out with one last explosion. Once everyone was taken care of, I headed over to the Mojave outpost. On my way, I had to go around the Viper's hangout, as I only had two bullets left in my pistol and no other option that wouldn't get me detected. After talking to Knight, I returned to Prim to complete the quest, granting Myers his pardon. Starting back at the Mojave outpost, I collected Ranger Ghost quests and got the unique dialogue for sneaking up on her. To make it to Nipton, I snuck around the Jackal members as I didn't have any ammo for the fight and headed straight to Nipton, where Oliver decided to run away instead of greeting me like he normally does. Continued on. I spoke to Vulpus and returned to Ranger Ghost to turn in her quest for some XP. I decided to make a quick trip back to Good Springs where I checked Chet if he had restocked his inventory so I can buy more ammo for my pistol. On my return to Nipton, I took out a member of the Legion where I stole his uniform for later purposes. I continued on the normal route and made it to Novak, where I did my usual Bleeding Boons quest for the quick XP and continued my journey to Boulder City where I convinced the Great Cons to let the hostages go. On my way out, I caught Victor in a place I've never seen him before. I'm sure I've always missed him, but after all these years, I'm still learning new things, and it was just very odd. 
I continued on with this boring path to New Vegas, and once I got there, the first thing I did was the King's Quest. I killed Oris by sneaking a landmine into his pocket and informed the King about his express leg amputations. I continued the quest like normal, defusing the situation with the NCR, and turned in the quest. Now, I need to head into the strip and get more caps so I can buy the anti-material rifle. I went to the Atomic Wrangler to gamble and went over 5k in caps. On my way to the strip, the Securitron came all the way over to me just to ask for the credit check. After entering the tops, I took out each chairman. However, I let Benny go as I completely forgot I can talk to Swank and convince him to let me kill Benny. But oh well. I looted the key to get into his bedroom and made my way over to Yes Man to begin the independent New Vegas questline. My next stop was the Gun Runners, where I picked up the anti-material rifle. I ran back inside Freeside to the Old Mormon Fort where I picked up Arcade Ganon. You may be wondering why I picked him up as a companion, but I did this because of his companion quest which would not only recruit the Enclave on my side, but give me power armor training, which I would need later in the run. To start his quest, I had to get a couple good boy points with him, and the easiest way of doing this was going to the fort and speaking a few specific lines of dialogue. While at the fort, I secured the platinum chip and headed over to the bunker to upgrade the Securitrons, completing Caesar's quest. I made my way over to Camp McCarran where I spoke to Thomas Hildren, which will give me the last good boy points I needed with Ganon to begin his quest. But I needed to wait a little bit longer and progress to the story a little bit more before he gives it to me. That did not sound right. I progressed through the story by talking to Dr. House and completing his first two quests, where I then deemed him useless and killed him. To prevent me from being detected while I kill him, I had to quickly shoot the pod before when it first opened. I then had to endure the loudest section of this entire game while Yes Man uploaded himself to the mainframe. Once I left the Lucky 38, Ganon gave me his quest and I went to collect each of the remnants, only having to complete the quest for Dr. Henry where I had to go to the nearby cave and find the source of the Night Stalker's mutation. After realizing I went the wrong way about after 8 deaths, I found the easier way to the source and completed the quest which allowed Dr. Henry to join us. After I met everyone at the remnants bunker, I spoke to them about joining the NCR side. But because of this choice, Orion ran out. Unfortunately, I did not have a speech skill high enough to defuse the situation, so I had to take him out. But at least on the fortunate side, I can use his armor later on, and his weapon. I finished up the quest, receiving the power armor training I wanted so badly, and then I left to head over to the boomers just to make contact, as I'll be dealing with them later. On my way out, I grabbed the hollow tape off the nearby corpse, and then made it over to Hidden Valley. With the power armor training, as well as the power armor collected from that corpse and the hollow tape, my goal was to sneak into the Brotherhood's base. However, this plan did not work so well. Instead of fully researching how to properly sneak in, I went too far in the independent quest line to allow me to sneak in. I should have gone through another quest line to activate Ganon's quest, but not to lock me out of this option to sneak in. As I was too far into the run at this point, I just continued and completed the quest, smashing Dobson's radio and returning to the Elder. I thought maybe I can assassinate the Elder without alerting anyone, however this did not go to plan. On the first floor everyone was fine and I was able to escape with no issue. Shit. I pickpocketed the key cards and activated the self destruct sequence. And to escape without being seen, I used the stealth boy I picked up from Joe Cobb earlier in the game. This allowed me to escape with no further issues. To continue the main quest, I had to head over to Red Canyon to make contact with the Great Cons, making a quick stop to observe the wildlife along the way. Unfortunately, this is where I make another mistake. I forgot to take out the Great Cons. Don't know how I forgot, but I simply did, and only now realized it after going back to the footage. I decided my next course of action was to get the suppressor for the anti-material rifle, so I headed back to the Remnants bunker took the Fallen Enclave's armor, and then sold it to the gun runners so I can buy the suppressor and additional ammo. Since I was still working on Yes Man's quest, I headed over to the Ultralux and took out Mortimer and Ma Margarine, Mar where the fuck her name is, as well as a few others. When I was done having some fun, I returned to the Boomers to start their quest line, helping Raquel and Loyal to gain the Boomers' trust, as well as listening to the Yapper, which I somehow bugged. After completing the quest to raise the bomber, I left for the fort. I turned in and completed Caesar's quest until his brain tumors needed to be operated on, where I had the option of purposely killing him during surgery, like Agent 47 would do. After giving him the scheduled lobotomy this time, I returned to Yes Man to begin the final quest before the battle of the Hoover Dam. I quickly installed the chip and returned to start the battle. 
To avoid getting detected, I stayed at a distance, picking off each person one by one until I can enter the dam and install the override chip in the dam's control panel. Once in, I got an angle on the heavy NCR troopers where one singular bullet took them out with ease, but the normal NCR troop tanked the shot. After making my way through, I installed the chip, flipped the switch, and exited to head over to the Legates camp. Once outside, I let the Scaratrons and the Enclave take care of most of the Legion so I would not be spotted. After entering the Legates camp, I swapped over to the explosive ammo for the anti-material rifle where I took out each of the guards with a single shot. Now for the Legate. I just stood out of reach of his dialogue and scratched his brain for him, taking him out in only one shot. For the guards that are with him, they just stood still, not even making an effort to attack me. I took them both out and headed over to the gate to leave, where I'd come face to face with General Oliver and his men. The only way to survive this was to run and hide for a few seconds while the Securitrons took care of everyone. I ended the game, proving that yes, you can beat Fallout New Vegas as Agent 47. Even though I technically did not comply with my original plan, I still count this challenge complete. However, I would not be opposed to trying this challenge again and making it a point to take out every faction, including not only their leaders, but every member, all while being undetected. If you'd like to see more challenges like this, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to leave a like and comment down below on what you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching and see you later.